Hi, this is Joshua Fitzpatrick with AWC. Today I wanted to show y'all how to enable system memory and clock memory. So let's get to it. Let's start a new project and let's call it training. Let's enter, which says create. Once we have our project open, we're just going to add an S7-1200. I'll just put a fake one in there so I can use the simulator. So I'll just go to project view right here on the bottom left. Go to add new device in the project tree. And choose our 1200. I'll just choose CPU, then 1211 AC DC relay. Expand that out. And then I'll just grab the latest one, which is a 4.5. Say OK. Now that the PLC has been added, you can single click on the PLC, go to Properties, and then underneath the Generals tab, you can scroll down to System and Clock Memory. And then we can enable it by checking this box. By default, it'll be M1.0 through 1.3, which includes the first scan bit, the diagnostic status update. You're always true bit and are always false bit. The second thing that we're going to add is the clock memory bits. So when you enable that, it actually uses the default zero M0 byte, which it will include M0.0 through M0.7. And that's for like if you want blinks or something like that, or like a heartbeat or something. So let's add those to our project. So... Since we have enabled this, and this is in the hardware config, this requires a hardware download, so it will stop the PLC. So if you're using an existing PLC and you want to put this on there, it will stop it. So if it's a running system, you need to be mindful of that. So let's open up our simulator, and then let's get this thing downloaded. I'm going to press OK to open up the simulator. If you don't have the simulation and you have an actual true PLC, it's a little faster. But since I don't have the physical PLC, I have to use sim. So I'm just going to put this down here at the bottom of our screen so we can watch it. Since I'm using sim, I have to set it up as a trusted resource. It's now going to compile a program. And it looks like there's some errors. So it's actually talking about some security settings that I it must be enabled by default. So let's let's exit out of that. And let's go to these arrows right here and see what it's talking about. So if we slow to, slowly go down to the last one right here, it should show up with the uh, password issues going on. So this is something default that's on uh, V17. So I want to enable the full access. And I also know that this protection is enabled, so I want to disable that because I just need to download. I'm just doing testing purposes. This is not for uh, it, this is not for like a system that's going on in the field where I would want a password on it, so I don't want that. So I'm just going to now completely compile it one more time. And as you could tell down at the bottom, there's only one warning. So let's press download. Make sure it's happy. Let's load. And then you want to start your PLC because right now it's in stop, as you can tell. So I'll press finish, and it'll go into run, just like a normal PLC. So now it's in run. So now let's go to our tags table right here. And you can kind of pick out what tag you want to use in your program. This is just the easiest way to show it. So I'll just go up here and press monitor all. And at this point, you can see that this one's always on. This one is false. This is the full byte of all these clock bits. So it kind of just counts through. You can see that this one's just coming on, come off, come on, come off. This one's a little slower. And as you keep on going, they just get slower and slower. Okay, so that is the system memory and clock memory. So we can add that to our code. So let's just go and add it to our code so you can kind of visualize it. So we're going to open up OB1 on this menu. And I'm going to add a second network because I'm going to first do an always true. And I'm going to have a blink that happens on. So like, let's just say you had a proximity switch that was broken. But the machine doesn't technically need it. And you just need it to run till we get the new part in. We could add that 
always true to keep the procs on so that some something can still run. So let's just add that to our project. It's going to add this, always true. That is a coil, so we could turn on something. Look at that, and it's not defined yet, so we will define that. So define tag, right click define tag. And I will take the next global memory, just so I don't have to type in anything in. So it's going to get 2.0. Define. Same thing, we're going to put a blinking light. So we'll just click here. Call this. Go clock memory. And let's make it a really fast blink, like 10 hertz. And then go here. Add one more coil. Call that blink light. Right click. Define tag, we'll add it as a global memory, and press define, 2.1. At this point, we should be able to download. You can see that nothing matches up right now, but once we download, oh, there it goes. It's going to say load. Let's load it. You see down at the bottom, it says main was loaded successfully, and everything is turning green now. So everything should be green. So we now know that both the offline and the online versions are the same. We can now click these glasses to go online with our code. And if I drop this menu down, you can see everything's on. And as you can tell, the true is on and the prox is always high. And this is going at 10 hertz, so it's going to blink real fast. We can't really see it because the scan cycle is so fast, but... It should be going about 10 hertz. If we had, if we were actually looking at a PLC, we'll see that. All right. Well, that's how to do system memory and clock memory. Thanks for watching.